Welcome back, everybody. My name is Tim. This is another Real Ideal Gear Review. And today, the studio lights are all being provided by flashlights. I've got two massive flashlights running my diffusers. I've got other accent lights here and there trying to kind of light things up and make sure I have the right exposure for the camera. So it's a little different, but at the same time, this is all flashlights. There are no studio lights going on. Matter of fact, my studio, my main studio light is right behind me. So today we're looking at flashlights, and today we're going to be looking at Lumen Top. When I was looking at my collection of flashlights and the flashlights I use most often, I found myself looking at the brand and Lumen Top has the majority of the real estate when it comes down to my pocket, in the car, in my kits, um, survival kits, hiking, all that kind of stuff. So we're going to take a look at Lumen Top and we're also going to make some comments about why not Olight, why not Nightcore, why not Rovivon, and some of the other ones, Through Night. Um, I've got a bunch of flashlights. And it's not like I'm not going to be using those flashlights. I just particularly find myself gravitating towards Lumen Top. So we'll turn this around, take a look at this, and let me know what you think. All right, we're going to be looking into the Lumen Top flashlight series. I've got uh, two, four, six of them here. I've got an Olight out here in the keychain section. I've got three other flashlights I'm going to talk briefly about that I'm looking into. I've had one of them in my pocket carry for months, and I really like the design. I just wish they would tweak one thing on it. But we'll talk about those three at the very end, along with the Olight keychain lights. So we're going to start off with the, the Lumen Top keychain series and the two flashlights that I absolutely love. I mean, I this is these are outstanding keychain flashlights. Number one for the size. It's not even close how much shorter the, the Lumen Top Frog is than the Olight i1R2 Pro. Not even close, okay? And when it, when it comes down to space at this size, that differential percentage-wise is very large because percentage is, is basically a proportion, okay? And so for me, yeah, this is a major, major savings, especially with the keychain, especially in your pocket. Now, if that's not a huge deal for you, you know, the Olight's going to give you a little bit better runtime. It has 180 lumens, okay? Great, great flashlight. The Pico, which is this one right here, has 130 lumens, Okay, both of these are twist tops. The Olight and the Pico are twist top. Two levels, high and low, high and low. Okay, Great flashlights. I love the texturing on the barrel on both of them. Okay, Great one-handed operation. So I can go low and there's high. All right, Easy operation. Great keychain att attachment. Olight doesn't come with one. I, I just like, come on. $20 for the Olight, $15 for the Lumen, Lumen Top Pico on Amazon. Now the kicker is the frog, the Lumen Top Frog 2.0, 600 lumens. Even if it's 500 lumens, it blows the other two away. Absolutely blows them away. Now, lens-wise, you're going to get a wide dispersal of light on here because it's such a shallow reflector. Okay, That's true, but you're going to get a much better diff diffused light with the Pico. So if you're looking for close quarters, you know, again, under the car seat, underneath the couch, that kind of thing, close quarters, in a crawl space, mechanical room, that kind of thing. This is going to give you that quick illumination that you need. Now, if you're using this for 5, 10, 15 minutes at a time, I would question this flashlight and I would go, I'm, we're going to talk about a couple others that have that, that etching on the lens to diffuse the light. We're going to talk more about that. Um, but if you're looking for longer term, this is not it. This is short term, wide dispersal, excellent keychain flashlight. But for 600 lumens, you can't go wrong with this. Four modes. So 600 lumens at the maximum level, but I've got three other levels that I can use and save the battery, so to speak. Okay. Um, downside is potential activation in your pants uh, pocket because uh, the button is, is exposed to being pressed by keys and whatever else is in your pocket. Okay. So just got to keep that in mind. I haven't had it go off in my pocket yet. I'm okay with that. Um, also, because there's a status indicator light on the button, this battery is going to slowly drain over time. So about every other week, I take the cap off and I charge it. Now, what about the charging on this? You have to take the cap off. I don't like this system at all. There's the battery. You put a different cap on that has a USB Type-C cap or plug in it and charge it. So you have 
a, another piece that you add to this to charge it. Not a fan of that at all, okay? The Pico, you unscrew, the cap also comes off, but this is captured, the battery's captured, and you have the USB micro um, charger on here. So not Type-C, I wish it was Type-C, but it's not, okay? All right, so those are the two downsides on the charging, but these are keychain flashlights, folks. All right, these are not your bigger flashlights. Love these, awesome. All right, let's talk about the Tool AA 2.0 and 3.0. Now, the next four flashlights we're going to talk about are AA batteries uh, as far as size goes. So some places will call this a keychain flashlight. Sometimes AA's get labeled that way. Often AAA battery uh, flashlights will be labeled keychain flashlights. I'm telling you, folks, these are keychain flashlights, not this. Not, and even if it was a AA, it's, it's just too big. All right, this Olight is about as big as I'd go attaching it to a keychain. Now, AA 2.0, AA 3.0, these are both the tool models, okay? What are the main differences? It's lumen, okay? The, uh, the, the lithium ion rechargeable battery in here is going to drain faster in the 3.0. This is 900 lumens versus the 2.0, which is 650 lumens, okay? So you got to keep that in mind when you're using these two flashlights that you're going to have flashlights that are going to go through batteries faster. So that should help you determine what the use is for the flashlights. Okay, the reflectors on these are much deeper than you'd find on a keychain flashlight. All right, you're just not going to have this. This is a very shallow reflector, which means a very wide dispersal of light. Maybe a hot spot in the middle, which there is. There's a hot spot in the middle of this one. You're going to have a hot spot here, but this is intended because this is more of a spot light with a little bit of splash around the outside. I like it. I think there's a definitely a purpose for it. Um, but as far as close quarter type stuff, uh, it you have that spot. I'm not so sure. For some people, they like the spot. Other people, I like the diffused light, actually. I like to have more even light um, because when I'm up close with a spot, that little spot gets smaller and smaller the closer the flashlight gets to the object that I'm illuminating. So just keep that in mind. When you have a diffuser on the lens itself, okay, you're going to have... As you get closer, it's going to get brighter, but it's still a very diffused beam of light. All right, so both of these have the same reflector. They're the same barrel, same texturing. I love the texturing on the barrel. Very well done. The clips are terrible. I say terrible because for the money, you can get a better clip on other brands. And we're going to talk about that at the very end. has a lanyard hold here. Um, you have the tail cap uh, user interface, four modes. Um, again, 650 is the high, 900 is the high here. I'll put the, the different um, illumination levels in the video here so that you can see that. Now, what are the uses for these two flashlights? For me, this is more distance type use. We're talking like parking lots, not parking ramps, but parking lots. We're talking hiking and camping. Um, you can take these clips off, spin them around, and there's two spots for the uh, clip to be used. So you can turn this around and use this as a ball cap type headlamp if you want. And I would, I would recommend that because if I was to carry this, I don't think I'd carry this in my pocket. So I am putting this into a pack, into a pouch. Um, it might be a jacket pocket, that kind of thing. Or I might just put it right on my ball cap to start with so it's all set up, ready to go if I'm doing you know, a sunset hike or something like that. Okay, But I think these two flashlights do serve that purpose for long distance security type things. We're going to talk more about like what, what am I getting all riled up over. Nobody really talks about the security purposes of these flashlights. I haven't seen very many of them, and I'm not the only one that's doing this. I know that. I get it. All right, But I just don't hear very much of it at all. I've never seen it in the videos I've been watching. That's all about the specs. But we're going to talk about the security uses. So when it comes down to hiking, camping, um, if you're going out to your parking lot and it's a large lot and you want to cover some ground with your flashlight, definitely do that. The nice thing about these flashlights is the four modes. So you're going to get that very low light level. You get the very high intensity level. So you have a lot of options when you have four modes versus some of the other ones. I'll just spill the beans here. The Ace Beam Pokelet only has two, high and low. Now that might be enough. And frankly, the, the simplicity of it might be enough. Okay. But if I think the low is not too low, it's not low enough, I want to conserve my fuel inside that battery for a longer period of time. Well, then that becomes a problem. And if you have four modes, more than likely, you're going to get that ultra low mode. See, so this is where you start thinking about security and you start thinking about usage. And if it's going to be extended usage, then I do want the ability to go lower on the on the overall intensity of the light beam. 
So again, hiking, camping, uh, security is like longer distances, kind of a searching light. This is more of a spot reflector anyway. So this is going to throw that light out further than will some of these other ones I'm going to show you here in just a second. So I'm going to put these to the side for a minute because you're going to see what I'm talking about with these next two right here. So this is the Lumentop EDC-15 and this is the Silver Fox. All right, both of these are barrel activated illumination switches. We have tail switches over here. These are barrel rotations, okay? And you can go between the four levels, okay? So here are the four levels, all right? We're maintaining that, which is great, um, which is awesome. And also, as far as activation, if you put it in the pocket, these, I think, are much more difficult to accidentally activate in your pocket than would be a tail switch, okay? And even with lockouts, I hear it all the time. Well, lockouts, uh, you just use your lockout function. If I have my keys, if I sit down in a weird way, my keys are pressing the tail switch in a way that holds it for five seconds, I've just unlocked the flashlight. Okay. Well, what about the five tap? Okay, the five tap. I'm just, the point being is to twist a barrel, I think security wise, is much harder to do accidentally uh, while it's in your pocket than would be a switch of any kind. Okay. So, this flashlight, the EDC-15, AA battery, no magnetic base. I wish they had a mag magnetic base. It comes with a keychain <laughs> a keychain hook on here. Is this a keychain flashlight? No, but I'll tell you what. When you look at the length of this is the 3.0 and the EDC-15, you can see how much longer the Lumentop AA 3.0 is compared to the EDC-15. That's a significant difference. So could you carry this on a keychain? Probably. Um, I just think that's an awful lot of flashlight to carry on there. Again, here's the frog. And this is what I'm talking about. It's almost half the size. All right. 600 lumens, 650 lumens. Right. Okay. Obviously more capacity, longer burn time. Okay. All right. Um, when it comes down to charging, um, this is going to be unscrew the cap on the top and take the battery out, charge the battery. If you have the plug in on the battery, you can do that. There is no import on the side of the, the barrel of this flashlight. Same thing for these. You can unscrew the tail cap. All right, the battery comes out, and if it, whatever the kind of battery you have in there, this is the 14500. If you have the plug-in, there's the, the Type-C, okay? You just plug it in there, okay? But there's no external port, which actually helps with the waterproofness of these flashlights, okay? Um, what I wanna show you now is the diffuser on the end of this light. So now remember, we looked at the Pico and we said great diffusion of light, close quarters. Same thing with the EDC-15. 650 lumens, but it's passing through a diffuser at the end here on the, on the lens. Shallower reflector on the inside as well. So when we compare these two, these are pretty comparable. This is 650 lumens, 760 lumens. Okay, So 760 lumens spread out over a larger area. Okay. Length, definitely shorter. But when you look at the reflector on here, you can see the difference between a spot uh, light, so to speak, and a diffused wide beam light. Okay, Security purposes, why the difference? This is a much better close quarters type flashlight. This is like if you're going up and down staircases, if you're using uh, parking ramps where the cars are much closer together, you don't have these wide open spaces. Like out where I'm at in western Montana, there's a lot of parking lots. I would prefer to have a, a flashlight like this, not a watch, a flashlight like this that will cover a parking lot um, at greater distances, okay? But with a parking ramp, staircases, elevators, uh, inside the home, this is a legitimate probably, I would carry this in the pocket more so than I would carry any one of these. More of a pocket carry, um, definitely a pouch carry if you had a pouch that you had for your car um, or a purse or a, a sling pack that you, you carry in and out of, of work. This is definitely the, the flashlight for this. This is close quarters, highly diffused light, 760 lumens. That's an outstanding value. So 900 lumens on the 3.0, 650 on the 2.0, 760 on the EDC-15. Now, these two are different style lights. This is diffused. All right, now next, Silver Fox. The Silver Fox is a fantastic flashlight. It is much like the, the EDC-15. So these two are very similar to each other. About the same length, the EDC-15 is slightly shorter, okay? Both AA, both use the same 14500 battery. Nine, or sorry, not, this one's not 900, that's not 760 lumens, 760 lumens. Both of these have basically the same output. Both of them are barrel twist user interface, okay? And they go on and you go between them. There is a strobe in here, which I find the strobe on this user interface to be annoying. 
Um, I think it has to do with how fast you move between low and medium. Okay, there's low. I still have, I can try it again. There's high. I, I still, there it goes. All right, so that was after medium. The user interface on that for the strobe is, is not very good. On the, on the same note here, I don't like, I don't like a strobe user interface on a on a twist barrel type uh, user interface. I, I don't think the strobe fits well with there. I think the strobe fits much better on a tail switch than on a barrel or a twisty user interface. This this to me it just doesn't it doesn't work. Okay. But I suppose to each their own, like you can learn to use it. That's fine. I'm not saying it shouldn't be there. I just I don't like it. And I found it to be kind of hard to activate anyway. So now back to these two. Both of these have the etched lens. These are both wide dispersal beams close quarter type illumination. Both are 760 uh, as far as lumens go. But the interesting thing between the EDC 15 and the Silver Fox is the key. Uh, dis you can disattach, you can unattach the flashlight from your keychain if you're carrying it that way. Much easier. It's just, it's a magnet and it's a strong magnet. So this is not going to easily come apart. You do have to pop it apart. Once you pop it apart, you have a magnetic flashlight. You can stick it onto something magnetic. Um, you have a wide dispersal beam, so if you're fixing something in the house underneath the sink, you got something metal on the, under there, you can put, pop this up there and have a nice wide, wide dispersal beam, 760 lumens. It's a great, great combo. Now, it doesn't have the long range that your tool 3.0 or 2.0 have. Okay, 760 lumens means that that 14500 battery should not de uh, deteriorate or be using up the fuel as fast as your 3.0, which is 900 lumens. Okay, it's going to use a little faster than the 2.0. So if you're looking for longevity of battery, you got to keep that in mind. There's just no way around it. That's the way physics works. Okay, it takes energy to illuminate. So when it comes down to the flashlight, I this is one of the best, I think, close quarter flashlights that you can have pocket carry and or just kind of around the house, sling pack, um, in the car, that kind, of, that kind of thing. If you're looking for something a little bit more long distance, then you need to go with the Tool 2.0 or the 3.0. Now, for camping purposes, I would go with the 2.0 because I'm more interested in preserving the battery because one of the things I think you have to keep in mind when you're hiking and camping is you always have to think that you're going to be outdoors for a day longer than you, you plan on. Okay, Always think that you're going to be outdoors for a day longer than you're planning on because if something goes bad, okay, Preserve the battery that you have or the batteries that you have so that you can use them for at least 24 hours longer. Which also means if you're using a flashlight with 900 lumens and you're cranking it up and searching the camp and having a good time and all that, um, it just is going to burn through the fuel faster. So if you're of the con conservation mind as I am, I would go with the 2.0, even though I know the 3.0 is greater. I would use the 3.0 more for searching. This is a great flashlight for a car. If you do a lot of uh, traveling, if you're, again, from work to the office, out to your cars, through a parking lot, this is probably something to have in your pocket or in a purse or in a, in a sling pack or whatever, backpack, whatever you're carrying. I think that's a great flashlight for that, okay? Because you could easily recharge this. You're going to get in your car, pop the battery out, charge it up every once a week, okay? Great, great, uh, great urban type flashlight. Hiking and camping, both of these will be fine. You just have to manage this really well. Again... When you're doing the, the hiking and camping thing, you're going to want to have at least four modes. Don't go with a two-mode flashlight, which brings me back to the poke lip. This is the ace beam. Let's talk about the, some of these other ones that are on my radar. Great flashlight. User interface has only a high and a low. Great clip. By the way, the clips on these guys are terrible. I don't know if I mentioned that or not. The clips are terrible. I, it just boggles my mind that you spend that little money on the clip. You spend a little bit more money on this clip, and this is an outstanding flashlight. Great clip here, um, tail switch, easy to use, okay? Three levels of operation. Another ace beam that I really like, and I carried this for a long time, was the H16. The H16 is your kind of right angle uh, lens that comes off the flashlight barrel. Great clip, magnetic base, 1,000 lumens and a very well-defined beam that comes out of here. Very much a circular, well-defined circular beam. I love it. I think it's great. And again, multiple levels of, of uh, light that comes out. There we go. So it is a top switch. You can go between the different levels, right? Three different levels, 1,000 lumens out of that flashlight. Fantastic interface. I like it. 
And it's it's this kind of a flashlight. You can put it in a pocket. You can put it in a shirt pocket. So with a magnetic tail base, um, great for a vehicle. Um, this to me is is one that you put on the side of the vehicle and you can rotate up and down. Does a great job. I love this. I use this flashlight backing up my trailer so many times for that reason alone. The difficulty with a magnetic base where the light comes straight out the back is you can only put this on the very back of your vehicle and the light goes straight back from there. This is on the side of the vehicle, so you're lighting up down the side of the vehicle, down the side of a trailer if you're using a trailer. So for me, that's why I like this a lot. Great flashlight. Now, skill light is the last one. I went, well, I've talked a little bit about the Olight, but the skill light is the other, or skill hunt is the other brand I'm getting into right now. I've got a few more coming in to take a look at. Very similar to the tool. 2.0 and the 3.0 as far as design goes. Much better clip. It's a two-way clip on here, much like the Ace Beam. I like that tail cap switch. Um, there's a lot of good things about this flashlight and diffused lens. You have the etched lens on here for some diffused light. So I really like this flashlight. I'm going to get more use of behind it before I talk more about it, but I have good feelings of that going forward. So there you go. There's my lumen top. If I was to pick any of these lumen tops, I would definitely go with the Silver Fox for kind of that urban carry around the house. If I was going to use one for the vehicle, you know, parking lot type situations, longer distances, backpack, uh, maybe camping, I would definitely go with the 3.0 because there's four levels that you can control. If I want to control the output of the battery, and just preserve my battery life, I'm gonna go on a multiple day camping trip, I would bring the 2.0, okay? You don't need a lot of light in the dark. Once you turn the light on, it doesn't take much to illuminate things. Now the EDC 15 is great. I just think it's a great overall flashlight. It's the shortest of all four of these. Same illumination level as the Silver Fox. So if you just want something a little simpler, Okay, you don't want the magnetic tail cap at the bottom. Um, sometimes this can be a pain because this, this attaches to anything metal in your pocket. Okay, that can be an actual pain. Um, you, you're grabbing the flashlight and out comes your keys or the keys snag on something, they fall on the ground. So you got to pay attention to that. So if you want something simple, the EDC 15 is a good one for that. So I love the Lumen Top series. I think it's a great series. I'm going to get into some other stuff like an LEP. I've got one of those on my radar. Um, I really like to see what those look like. But Lumen Top does a good job. I like it. It's it's straightforward, good value, and uh, very easy to get these flashlights too. So if you go follow the link in the description, put your comments down below. I'd love to hear more about what you have to think about these flashlights and any other other ideas out there. And uh, the, as far as the O lights go and all that. We'll talk more about that some other time. I don't have, I'm running out of time on this. This is getting way too long. We'll talk more about Olights. Why am I not an Olight fan? I used to be an Olight fan. Now I've kind of jumped off the bandwagon for a couple of major reasons. Thank you for watching. My name is Tim. This has been another Real Ideal Gear Review. We'll catch you guys next time.